Hey everyone, in today's video I want to share with you the similarities and differences between two favorite prime lenses for portrait photography which are the 50mm and 85mm lens. So hopefully this video will give you some insight in case you're stuck choosing between these two focal lengths. So I just released a video on five reasons why you should think about using the 50mm lens for portrait photography and I'll leave that link down below in case you're interested in watching. But today I really wanted to focus on comparing that lens to the 85mm and show you the differences with some example images. So I currently use the Canon 50mm 1.2 and the Canon 85mm 1.2 Mark II lens but all the comparisons and reasons that we're doing in this video apply to any lens of these focal lengths. I'm also using these lenses on full frame cameras, so I'm using the Canon 5D Mark III and IV and the Sony A7 II and III. Just keep in mind that if you have a crop sensor camera, these lenses will look slightly more cropped in depending on what the crop factor is, so just something that I wanted to mention. So the first thing I wanted to talk about are the similarities between these two lenses. When you look at some example images, there's no surprise as to why these two prime lenses are a go-to for portrait photography. Both these lenses create stunning images and they're great for capturing close-up photos, mid-length photos and full-length portraits as well. Both focal lengths at wide apertures are great for creating background to foreground separation to help your subject stand out in the image and they're both considered pretty standard or traditional focal lengths to take photos of people. While the 85mm is considered a more traditional lens for close-up photos, especially for headshots, you can still create some really stunning portraits on the 50mm lens. Here are some comparison images so you can see what they both look like. To an untrained eye or to maybe someone who's never shot on either of these lenses before, the photos from each of them might look pretty similar. So I think the most important factor in being able to decide between the two comes down to the differences. So with close-up portraiture, there are a few reasons as to why I would choose shooting on the 50mm rather than the 85 and vice versa. Bringing up the example images again, in the 50mm shots, you can see slightly more of the background of the location that we're shooting in. This is because the 50mm is a bit more wide angle than the 85, which is considered to be more of a telephoto lens. So for a photo shoot where I have an amazing location that I really want to show off in my photos, I would choose to shoot on the 50 to be able to capture more of the environment and also capture some really flattering portraits at the same time. On the other hand, the 85mm is perfect for when you have a slightly less than amazing location, such as this photo shoot that we did in a really plain park. The telephoto look of the 85 really compresses the location to the extent where you can't really tell where you are taking the photo in the final images. This is also great if you have a really small location to work with, such as a single tree or maybe a patch of flowers on the side of the road. The 85mm can really trick the eye into making it look like you were shooting in an amazing location when you really weren't. Whereas with the 50mm, you would be a little bit more limited in what you can do and you would really have to work on your angles and compositions to get a similar look. Something you guys know that I really love to capture in my photo shoots is movement. So for me personally, I would prefer to go for a wider angle lens as I'm able to move around more freely and I'm more easily able to compose my shots. So in this case, I would choose the 50mm lens over the 85. This is especially handy when movement happens when you're not really expecting it to. I prefer capturing moments as they happen as they're more genuine that way, so I would prefer to be on a lens that's a little bit wider so I can compose for anything that's happening rather than having to redo things because I wasn't using the right prime lens for the right moment. An example I wanted to share of this was with this photo where my model was standing in one spot on the rocks at the beach and all of a sudden she decided to move her arms up and I thought it would make for such a great shot. We were standing on some rocks near the ocean and I was shooting on my 50mm lens. 
Since I was on my 50, I was able to take a step back to be able to compose my shot and capture the movement as it happened. If I had been on my 85, I would have had to take several steps back to be able to get that shot, which A, would have been really dangerous on the rocks and I probably would have ended up in the ocean. B, it would have taken an extra few seconds to do so I could have missed the shot. Or C, I could have gotten the shot but her arms would have probably been cropped out which wouldn't have given the full effect of that pose. This is just one specific example, but it is something that I find that happens quite often on photo shoots, so it's definitely something to keep in mind. One last point I wanted to mention was the distance that these lenses create between you and your subject. For my portrait and fashion photography, I personally like to be physically closer up to my subject to communicate a little bit better and to also create a more intimate feeling on the shoot to get more out of the images. If you've watched any of my behind the scene videos, you would notice that I like to talk to my subjects quite a lot. I give them little instructions, I have just conversations with them. So if I was on a lens, an extreme lens, like the 70 to 200 on the 200 end, I feel like that wouldn't feel as genuine since I'm so far away from them. And I probably would also talk a lot less since I would really have to yell to be able to get my comments across to them. So for this reason, I really like to use my 50 mil lens for these kinds of photo shoots. On the other hand, there are some times where you do want to create that distance between you and your subject. Some examples of this are when you're photographing a wedding. I find that the 85mm is super handy, especially during the ceremony and the reception. I'm able to capture some really close up photos and moments without being too intrusive or getting in the way of guests. The 85 is also perfect for the wedding bridal portraits. Usually I shoot all the portraits on my 35 and 50 as those are kind of my two favorite lenses, but I find that giving your couple a moment to breathe and creating that distance with an 85 can help you capture even more genuine moments. This is because a lot of the time people who are getting married aren't as used to being in front of the camera the same way models are. So I do like to give them a little bit of a break during the portrait session and keep that distance by using an 85. This is also really handy for other aspects of photography. Sometimes you'd want to do the same thing with family portraits or maybe you want to capture some street photography or it's also great for capturing that more documentary style photos of guests kind of mingling at a wedding as well. In saying that, both the 50 and 85 are beautiful lenses and I love using both of them for completely different reasons. I do tend to go for my 50mm a little bit more than my 85 just because it is more versatile and caters more towards the type of portrait photography that I like to do. But when it comes to capturing close-up portraits, the 85 can create some absolutely stunning results. Please let me know in the comments which lens you guys prefer and what you like photographing with them as well. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I make new videos every Wednesday and Saturday, so I'll see you guys all next time. Bye!